I, I did, you know, the military, the, the military was great for me. And, and, but again, you, you were born for this. I mean, this is like something you were drawn to like a magnet to metal filings. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, I was, I was drawn to it, but I, I was still like, when I joined my dad, my dad said to me, uh, you're going to hate it because you hate authority. That's what my dad said to me. I was wow. like, okay. Uh, and you know, but that's that gives you an indication as to what kind of kid I was. I was like right. completely out of control and didn't listen to anybody. And I was probably similar to what you were like. I'm guessing, um, you know, I was just an out of control kid that just did whatever. And so joining the military, it it put it put the structure around me. And all of a sudden, I could take all this energy that I had. And and what's really nice about it is you get this clean slate where they're like, okay, if you do this, you'll be successful. Here's what you do: check these boxes. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to do those things. And you just do them and you develop the discipline, you know, the discipline. And I talk about that all the time. You know, the, the fact that discipline equals freedom and the more discipline you have as a human, the more freedom you're going to have, which is completely counterintuitive. You know, people think, oh, you're living this disciplined lifestyle. So that means you, you, you don't have any freedom. And it's actually the exact opposite. I have freedom because I have discipline. I have, I have, you know, financial freedom because I have financial discipline. I have more time i have more time because i have the discipline to get up in the morning you know mm. before most normal people get up those are the kind of disciplines that you put into place and those definitely get instilled through the military well i think the one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done and when you get things done when you 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 actually do things you 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 have more success if you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being fucking lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat fuck. Because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. That you, you get, there's got to be those days you push through. And they're they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. Yeah. I always tell my I always say that I'm like the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it. Yeah, but and, I always do. And I'd be interesting to get your perspective on this this statement. So I also think that discipline. Is a, is a pathway to creativity. And I'll tell you, when I talk about creativity, there's another misconception about the military. When you're on the battlefield is an absolute exercise in creativity, okay? I already talked about how you're gonna lead these people, what are you gonna do, how are you gonna influence them, how are you gonna talk to them, how are you gonna say the right things, that's creativity. Now you throw on top of that, what am I gonna do to the enemy? How are we going to attack them? How are we going to disorganize them? How are we going to get in their heads? That's all just massive creativity. And when I look at people that are artists like yourself, because you're a stand-up comedian, you, I, I would imagine that the more disciplined you are, the, you know, you got to get up and write, you got to write stuff down. You got to read and find out about what's going on in the world. So you have more things that you can jab at and, and make fun of you got to increase your vocabulary so that you are quicker and sharper so that when people are saying things you have more words to battle back at them all those things all that freedom that you get on stage comes from the discipline that you you study you learn you read you write you talk you go through things is that an accurate statement absolutely accurate there's a great book on it Stephen Pressfield wrote a book called the war of art and Pressfield was essentially like a ne'er-do-well till he was like 40 years old. He was kind of a fuck up and then figured it out somewhere along the line, figured it out. I used to keep a stack of them in my old studio and I'd hand them out to guests if I thought they needed it. I'm like, just take this, just trust me, read this. Because a lot of artists and comics, um, I, I, I bet musicians as well, but we're writers for sure. One of the big problems is sitting down and doing the work. Mm -hmm. And you, you got to, and Pressfield talks about that. It, it, in the most concise and beautiful way and he labels it like an enemy he calls it resistance mm -hmm. you know and that you have to sit down and you have to overcome resistance and that the pro goes to work and it doesn't matter if you're sick doesn't matter if you have kids it doesn't matter what you you're a pro and you go to work and that and that just it puts it in your head that this is what I do 
This is what, and you have pride in that. And then when you are in front of that keyboard, and you're you're you got you look down the count, it says I got fuck a thousand words today. I put a thousand words in you, yeah. And yeah. You, you you're doing the work, yeah. and out of that work, gems blossom, yeah. little things. But you might have a day where you just write nothing but dog shit. So what? Show up again tomorrow, and tomorrow out of that dog shit, a flower will emerge. You never know, and that's the only way to develop real. Like, to, to really develop your potential 100% in anything, whether it's as an author or even as a martial artist, there's a lot of creativity in martial arts. To be a great striker, you have to be creative because you have to, you have to develop patterns or execute patterns that are, aren't going to be perceived. Like if a guy has a real simple one two one two, you're gonna time that shit. And you're gonna. We, we were talking before the, this this podcast about Holly Holmes' victory over Ronda Rousey, and one of the things that we were talking about was that Ronda had this very linear, straightforward attack. You knew she was coming, and Holly is a master at at countering. So all she had to do was wait and move, and Ronda was coming in one direction. There was no. There was there was no variation. There was no creativity. There was no creativity. It was a mad bulldog rush that had worked on everybody else before, but she found one person who was a virtuoso at movement, and she needed creativity, and it wasn't there. And she needed that experience that came with having faced someone who knew that position and knew knew uh, had a, a deep understanding of that movement, and she didn't have that in her repertoire. And so that's the result that we saw. Like a striker like Anderson Silva is extremely creative. If you watch, he's got a fight versus Tony Fricklin um, in Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors? What the fuck was it called in England? Small organization in England. I think was it was it called Cage, Cage Warriors. Warriors? Yeah. yeah. Where he practiced this step in uppercut elbow. Like a sideways elbow, and his coach was going, "You're fucking crazy! Stop practicing that." And he would make his wife hold the pillow because his <laughs> his coach didn't want him to practice it anymore because he thought he was wasting his time. So he practiced stepping. His wife would hold a pillow for him, and he'd step in and throw this uppercut elbow. That's what he knocked out Fricklin with. Yeah. And he obviously yeah. Fricklin was outclassed in that fight, but he wanted to make a point. And like the front kick that he landed in the face of Vitor Belfort, Vitor never saw that shit coming because mm -hmm. nobody had done that to him before. Because nobody had done that in the history of the UFC. Nobody had ever knocked anybody out with the first kick you learn in martial arts. But the creativity to try something like that. He would throw punches to your thigh from standing. He would throw a jab to your thigh. He would throw a crescent kick, an inside crescent kick to your face. Like, what the fuck? It was, it was part of what made him such an effective striker is that he threw these things that you just didn't expect him to do. Mm -hmm. 